I think I got a little bit fed up because of the doctors just trying to give me medication. And I just, I don't believe that that's permanent because it is something human body, I believe, really is designed with to me the most efficient thing ever. If it's not working, it's not because he doesn't know how to work well. He does. It's just something I'm doing clearly is not helping my body. And I just wanted to find what it was with whatever I was doing before. It was clearly not working. I just decided to go with the carnivore. Again, I said, there's nothing to lose. I'm already kind of a hot mess. <laughs> I tried all the other diets. This one I've never tried. Okay, good morning, all. Welcome, happy uh, Thursday morning, January 12th, day 12 of World Carnival Free Month for you guys are keeping track. We have a guest today, Irina is here. Hi, yes, hi. Well, hi, good, everyone. Well, good morning, Irina. Where are you, where are you located? Uh, located East Coast, our uh, New York area. In an undisclosed location, <laughs> secret hideout yeah. anyway. All right, well, welcome. Thanks for thanks for uh, uh, taking the time to share your story with us. So I was kind of reading a little bit about background. It sounds like you had a fairly, um, you know, you weren't, so, weren't doing so well a while ago, but now you're thankfully uh, improving on that. So maybe you can just kind of share a little bit about your background and, and maybe we'll get started. Yeah, sure. I mean, I've been, uh, my name is Irina. I've been uh, doing carnivore since May 2020, essentially when COVID started. Okay. Um, I have a list of conditions of, <laughs> I don't know if you read, but definitely improved. Well, the like before uh, carnivore, during carnivore, um, I was actually, I had so many different conditions, but in reality, I tried all sorts of diets just to try and figure out um, if it was nutritional and I uh, just didn't want to take uh, these medications, this, whatever they were, they gave me a lot of different uh, medications or things I had to do. Um, and I pretty much have been doing all sorts of uh, things, particularly with IBS was one of them uh, for years since my early twenties or uh, something like that. But, um, and I tried, you'd name it vegetarian uh, at some point, pescatarian. Um, I went to like no meat and then I went into uh, some like combine what some might call balance, which is like legumes, veggie and carb, like, I'm uh, sorry, veggie and uh, meat combined kind of what's called balanced. And I did that for good four or five years, you know, just predominantly just a little meat, but also a lot of the other stuff that everyone just kept um, telling me to eat more fiber, more fiber, this and that. Mm -hmm. I had like uh, different conditions um, that were chronic and recurring. Uh, well, Candida was one of them, particularly, but then it was IBS, pretty heavy duty IBS. I even had like vitamin D deficiency. I had uh, bleeding gums. I had vasculitis. I had inflammation of joints. I had, you know, like exercise induced asthma, like you name it. And I couldn't even exercise because of all the joint to asthma, uh, you know, that was coming up. There's so many different things that were chronic that um, nothing was really resolving it. I got a little bit tired of doctors telling me, well, this is how it is. Some people are just affected with these things. You just have to take <laughs> this and that. And then for the rest of your life, I just didn't want to accept that. And I was like, I'm in my mid twenties at the time where like at that point, that's when I started looking into nutritional, but my early thirties, that's when I discovered your video which uh, with Joe Rogan, and I was like, I have to try this. Like, I got nothing to lose, you know. So, since then, carnivore, honestly, like, I haven't had single recurrence of any of the stuff. Well, that's that I mentioned. That's awesome. I mean, I want, I want to just kind of, you know, IBS is an extremely common thing now. It's like twenty percent of the population, I think, is, is is somewhere in that neighborhood is diagnosed with it, or you know, has symptoms of that and it, it, it's really kind of a catch-all diagnosis like hey your gut doesn't feel good we don't really know what it, it is and we're just going to call it ibs and right. um you know you went to i guess you went to a number I'm, I'm interested about the vasculitis how did how did you determine you had vasculitis because that's a it's it's not something most people even are aware of I, what, how did that manifest for you well i think i was like 14 15 it started occurring you know on my legs and then I, you know, went throughout my life to different doctors trying to figure out what it was. I thought it was a rash or something. And then they just told me it's vasculitis. And then I saw another dermatologist, vasculitis. And 
you know, I asked and it got to a point where it was getting um, more and more visible over the years um, to a point that it was like creeping up from my ankles all the way to getting towards my knees. But, it, you know, it was pretty obvious. And then, you know, during summer, I didn't even want to wear like <laughs> any skirts or anything like that. So it, it was told to me that it just doesn't go away. It was just like at some point they tried to give me some creams. Um, sometimes it would go away. Uh, I, to be honest, I don't remember what cream it was at this point because I'm not using it, but, um, but then it would pop up, it would pop up a lot. And then it kept, you know, getting increased in numbers too. It, it just wouldn't go away. Like, so I haven't, to, 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 like, I don't have it. And my doctor was surprised because he was like, what do you mean it went away? And I was like, well, check it out. It went away. So, so I mean, you had visible, yeah. like, inflamed vessels that you could see, like, in large yep. capillaries below the skin. And it kind of reminds me, we had a fellow the other day, it was just, he had psoriasis. He was, it was like playing whack-a-mole. He would rub some cortisone cream on it. It would go away for a while yeah. and pop up somewhere else. And it was just like, you're, you're constantly playing, you know, playing, playing, yeah. playing whack-a-mole with your skin. So that, so that's interesting. And so at what point did you realize that doctors weren't able to help you? I mean, what, what, how long into this process do you feel I'm just not going, getting anywhere with these guys or gals? You know, it got to a point that I, I had um, the polycystic ovary syndrome too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, my doctor was like, well, you know, I'm just going to give you birth control. And I just didn't want to do that again. But I was like, is there anything else I can do? She said exercise and, you know, diet. And I was like, well, okay, I guess I can increase my exercise. But the problem with exercise was I had joint problems that were inflamed that every time I would exercise, it would pop out of place. My hip, my um, like low back, and then I'm upper, like it was just consistently, then it would be a reason for me not to continue exercise. So I was like, I could try to increase that. And then the diet, I was like, okay, well, I can eat a little bit more cleaner, which means maybe less desserts. And we tried that. I tried that for like three months and it got bigger. My uh, sis got bigger, but um, then she gave me birth control and then she checked on it and it wasn't helping. And then at some point when I started doing the diet, let me see, towards the end of the year of 2020, I went to get it checked, uh, ultrasound. And the doctor was like, I don't see anything. What do you mean you have a poly? It was a different doctor because I had gone to Michigan at the time because of COVID to work from home. And she said she didn't check. She checked with ultrasound. She didn't see anything. And she said, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so she saw nothing. Like there was no signs of uh, polycystic ovaries or anything like that. I think the reason I started is because my uh, the candida recurrence was so often to a point that it was ridiculous. And then when the polycystic ovary syndrome happened too, uh, in addition to all the other things that were constantly ongoing, I think I got a little bit fed up because of the doctors just trying to give me medication. And I just, I, that was kind of the point where I was like, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I was like 31 at the time too. And I don't believe that that's permanent because it is something human body, I believe really is designed with to me, the most efficient thing ever. If it's not working, it's not because he doesn't know how to work well. He does. It's just something I'm doing clearly is not helping my body. And I just wanted to find what it was with whatever I was doing before. It was clearly not working. So I just decided to go with the carnivore. Again, I said, there's nothing to lose. I'm already kind of a hot mess. <laughs> I tried all the other diets. This one I've never tried. And I, I momentarily tried keto, to be honest, before doing carnivore. Um, I, I think you have to be a little bit too mindful about what you're eating. Otherwise I gained weight on it and I still was bloated too. So I had done that before carnivore and it didn't work out with me as much as carnivore. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the anecdote about the PCOS and it going away on ultrasound, which sounds incredible to people, but I've, I've seen it a number of times with a number of women. I and mean, there's a gal named Nevada gray who I interviewed several years ago, mm -hmm. same exact story. I mean, she had, it, you know, very clearly ultrasound proven, you know, cysts on our ovary, they're very clear to see, and then they all went away. And so, and I've seen that many, many times with women now. So that's, it's not, well, it may surprise your physician who probably doesn't, you know, probably provides probably suboptimal nutrition care, I would imagine, you know, it's not surprising to me to see that. Now, you know, as you, you know, you see like a lot of people saw me on Rogan, thought I was a crazy guy. Look at this nutty guy just telling people to eat meat. 
And, wow. and, and, you know, now we've had literally tens of thousands of people have done it and have seen very dramatic improvements. I, I guess, you know, we're in the middle of the start of this COVID pandemic. Everybody's kind of locked in. They, they locked a lot of people up, unfortunately. At what point, I mean, were you at such a level where it's like, I'm just so miserable, I'm going to try anything. Was that, was that where you were at when you tried that? I did. To be honest, um, uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I wasn't the first to go for it. My husband at the time, he found your video because um, um, he he watched it and he he was the same. He, he was, I would say maybe 80 to 100 pounds overweight. And he was also trying a lot of different things to lose weight and nothing was working. He started doing it uh, earlier than me, like about two months earlier and started seeing results really fast. He had a pretty bad case of eczema. Mm-hmm. and went away and that's i was fed up i was hesitant but also seeing him go through it um helped me to also feel like okay maybe i should try it at least he's doing it we could do it together so he definitely um introduced me to your video because i i mean joe rogan has so many videos but you know there was one that he found he had found and he started doing it i did think it was a little bit insane in the beginning that he was just eating meat. I would just watch my husband eat meat. <laughs> but once I started, uh, it was, it was pretty easy because before that, I got to mention the problem I also had was um, I was eating like every hour for something. I don't know what it was. Like I just couldn't get full. And then when I started doing carnivore, I did not need to eat as often. And I, what I liked about it too, that I just like got full but didn't feel disgusting. And I felt really good. And for the first time, I didn't need to like eat and keep eating. And um, to tell you another thing also, I don't know if it's relevant, uh, but uh, my mom was here for a week for holidays. She made all sorts of stuff. And um, I unfortunately, you know, kind of deviated for a few days, but I'm doing like a seven day fast to kind of reset. But right away, when I started trying those foods right away, like uh, some of the stuff, like I started coming back, like, you know, not fully, but at least IBS, I could already feel like definitely it's not like placebo. I ate the foods. Like I was just being nice because she was cooking, but um, sorry, like I could see like I automatically that level of discomfort and issues just right away. Day two started happening. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. And I've seen that many, many times, particularly depending on what the food is. When you're back to when you were doing a ketogenic diet, you said, you know, you're still having a lot of gut gut issues and just yeah. didn't help. What, what were you eating on the ketogenic diet, by the way? Does it was a lot of a lot of vegetables and things like that or what was going on? Um, I think maybe one thing that did not help is a lot eating a lot of nuts on keto. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought it was a good idea. And um, I think, to be honest, nuts just like messed me up pretty bad. But um, a lot of nuts. And then you know the, the issue with the keto was that you could still eat veggies and um, some of the fibrous vegetables too uh, really definitely didn't help me at all. What I noticed is, I mean, even doctors would tell me, eat more fiber, eat more fiber. I'm like, how much more fiber can I eat? You know, and it gets worse and worse. Um, so the keto was okay. So I would eat steaks still. I would eat a lot more like almond butter, peanut butter. Um, I would have some veggies. Um, and then I think the the fact that I was eating so many nut, like almond flour also, I would make things with almond flour. Anything that was with seeds or nuts um, in a flour form or none, whatever it was, making fat bombs with some of these things. Besides me gaining more weight on it, for some reason, um, my stomach just, my digestion just did not improve. Like it, it, I, yeah, the nuts did not help me whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot. And I think the nuts and the nut better for a lot of people, particularly when it comes to uh, trying to lose weight, it's, it's often not their friend. And, you know, add to that the potential effects that it might have on your gut. And so it doesn't seem helpful. Yeah. So when you made the decision, you know, you've seen your husband not die after two months, you're like, I'm sure you're looking at horrors. What is he doing eating all this darn red meat? I mean, did you have the, did you have the, cons- the sort of, I'll call it a misconception or a belief that, you know, red meat is kind of bad for us and we shouldn't eat very much. Was that something that had been sort of, did you ever, did you have that perception at any point? I mean, you, you, you'd chosen a plant-based diet for a number of years for, for whatever reason, yeah. but were you, were you like, Hey, meat's not good for us, or were you concerned about that at all? Well, to be honest, like in my culture, we actually eat meat a lot. 
But I think for some reason in America, um, there's this idea that meat is not good for you. And I have heard before, like, of course, paranoid people like, ooh, uh, red meat doesn't digest. Um, red meat causes more problems. Red meat causes cancer. You know, I'm sure everyone mm-hmm. has heard those things. But, yeah. but so definitely, I think I just allowed myself to be um, influenced by those things, you know, hearsay as opposed to me actually like you know, doing it for myself and figuring it out. And most of the time I did, I did those diets and clearly (laughs) um, it wasn't helping. So I don't know why people still persist on the red meat not being good for you. But um, the other thing was, it's like the influence that you think that something that's been going on or being eaten for thousands of years can be bad for you all of a sudden. Like, I don't know, like, it's just, quite ridiculous to me because when I look at um let's say where my parents grew up and uh in the areas or in those countries and villages where people are ex- very healthy and rarely do uh, have these problems but I don't know why I I just where I think it definitely it was me falling for the trap where they're just trying to push product on you um because if you don't believe that these things are good for you you're gonna buy it almond milk you know and uh, where where and, and yeah. you, where where did your parents hail from and you said your culture where where, where was oh that? yeah Ar- armenia so it's like okay. um yeah south caucasus like it's mm-hmm. like west asia but it's very uh it's like mediterranean diet um you know a lot of meats kebabs keftas mm-hmm. um we're not big on like carbs necessarily maybe every now and then there'll be a rice but not on a daily at least like it's just um uh, some veggies you know but it is very heavy on animal based uh cheeses a lot of cheeses uh eggs a lot of eggs meats but right now i'm also doing kind of modified where it's uh, a lot of eggs um, meat it's not just meat but i do a lot of eggs meat then natural sausages and uh, cheeses sometimes not so much but i'll stick to some fresh cheeses every now and then yeah yeah, I've got one of my friends. He's a professional MMA fighter, George Carhan, and he he is Armenian mm. by heritage. Yeah, I think yeah. he's, his, he, he I think he lived in Russia or was born there, but he was Armenian of yeah. Armenian heritage, and he's he's all all on board on carnivore for sure. Yeah. Okay, so let me, so you so you see your husband do this, and so how did you start? How did you how did you what was it like first day like? What, what how did you decide to do this? Okay, the first week was really hard. I felt I think it was I, my brain. It just felt like. Not foggy in the first week, but definitely had headaches. That I remember for sure. I had headaches the first few days. Um, And I think because of the headaches and like this entire period of not eating what I usually would eat, it felt like I didn't have energy. But I also at the time didn't realize, uh, didn't know so much about the electrolytes that I over time adjusted the whole electrolyte or salt. I didn't use salt uh, for hydration. Um, but I think it was because of that. I wasn't doing it correctly. Um, I did not implement more sodium. I didn't, you know, I didn't kind of know at the time, but then when I started doing that as well, it definitely helped with the hydration and stuff, but the first week was hard after that week. It's just, it got better. So, I mean, this is some common things people always say, where it's just like, you feel your energy goes up. Um, you feel like a little clearer, you don't have the need to sleep as much. I, it's kind of common stuff. I think people experience, I just didn't feel fatigued anymore. Like, especially after meals, I had the same level of energy and, uh, consistently without like, just feeling like I need to nap, um, after eating. So yeah, that, that was something I experienced. Yeah. And as far as, you know, you, you said, you know, you didn't feel like you had a need needed to eat constantly like you were before you weren't you weren't always yeah. hungry how much how much approximately were you eating you know do you know or do you keep okay. track of that i do yeah yeah i mean i'm pretty consistent but um for lunch i don't do breakfast um i do uh, consistently lunch lunch is usually for me like um three to four eggs and it depends if i exercise which i do regularly these days like i do a lot of weights and stuff but um if i'm it's generally three to four to five. It depends, but eggs. Um, and then uh, I would do bacon, like about four to five bacons, pieces of bacon, um, or I'll do um, sausage. It's like a beef sausage or um, 
like if they're leftovers of steak or beef or something the night before, I'll chop them up and eat it. So generally, consistently eggs. And then uh, I'm good. I don't need to eat until like 6 p.m. And then we'll eat like uh, different types. We'll make different foods. So it'll be like either a steak, like ribeye, or we'll make kebabs or keftas. Like it's just meats, ground meat put together. Or we'll make ground beef, um, which is like taco bowl. We call it taco bowl. It's um, you put just sour cream on it and some hot sauce and it's a taco ball <laughs> there you go and then um sometimes we do chicken uh not so much though because chicken doesn't have as much fat uh but sometimes we'll make chicken thighs uh or ten so it has more fat and then uh lamb we do lamb we do pork uh we do uh yeah pork or i make pork ribs pork belly pork shoulder butt pulled pork. I mean, there's so much really like we're making just lamb chops, roast. Um, there's some liver. I make a lot of liver once a week, at least liver dish. It's an Armenian liver dish. So I make liver in different types and stuff. So organ meats, um, at least once a week or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because some people include some people don't with the organ meats. And I know a lot of people, certain cultures, it's definitely more prevalent than others. When, um, you said you had vasculitis in your legs. When did that start going away? I mean, was it still fairly active as you started the carnivore diet or was it, was it already had it already faded by that time? When I started the carnivore diet, it was active. Um, I think probably, so I started in May, 2020. So I think about um, by the end of the year, um, I didn't see any signs of, uh, of that, but I can't recall hundred percent. I do remember I had a checkup um, and annual physical checkup that year it might have been november or december of 2020 when i saw a primary care so definitely was gone by then so from may to either november or december it was gone by then yeah and then what, what about the pcos ultrasound where that went away how long had that been after you started i mean you know who knows when it how, how what it was when you started the diet i, I suppose well, uh, let's see. So again, I started in May, the ultrasound they did in February. So COVID had started around March in New York. So I couldn't really do follow-ups and stuff like that. And then, so I did my next follow-up, I think it was December or January, and that was also gone. But again, I did not do it like before to know it might have, might have been gone before that, but for sure it was gone. Like So within a year, it was the, the, right. the ovarian cyst had disappeared. Yeah. Okay, so interesting. Yeah. And so when you went to see... The physician, you know, I, I guess for the ultrasound, it would have been probably an OBGYN type doctor, I'm assuming. And then the primary mm -hmm. care physician, your vasculitis has gone away, your, you know, your symptoms are gone. Did, did you share with them what you were doing? Did they have an interest or what was, what was yeah. the story there? <laughs> so, so funny. Cause like the previous doctor in, in New York, when I was, I told him I was doing keto, he was like, yeah, you need to stop doing that. Cause it's going to damage your liver, this and that. So he freaked me out a bit, but then the doctor, um, second time in Michigan, when I, I told the new primary care doctor about like that, oh, yeah, it's gone away because of this. He was just like, oh, really? <laughs> and I was like, I'm also doing like cold showers. I don't know if it's because he goes like, no, it's not the cold showers. He's like, I think it's the diet because he's like, I heard a lot of good things from uh, low carb or no carb diets. So he was he was like, whatever works for you. He didn't push me not to do it or something so he was definitely it was a different reaction and i think he was interested in that because he also uh, one of his specialties was like uh, fat loss and i think he was curious about uh, the carnivore diet more than other I, I had a feeling that he might say something against it as most doctors would because it's like the not the standard but his reaction was actually kind of positive uh, compared to the other guy that mentioned the keto stuff but yeah he was just surprised like really surprised that it went away yeah, yeah. That's, well that's good to see there's and, and there's more and more doctors out there that are that are starting to you know at least yeah. be interested and curious which which is good because a lot of them aren't and that's 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 a shame that you see patients getting better and you you, you kind of seem like you'd want to know what is going on here rather than just, yeah. you know, good for you, keep doing what you're doing and go away. At least to have some level of curiosity. Did you, I mean, you said the first week was problematic, you know, with, with regard to, you know, just symptoms and stuff like that. Did you find any other negatives? I mean, you said pretty much everything's gone away for you. So I assume it's generally pretty oh, positive. Yeah. But there, yeah I there mean, been... constipation probably, yeah. you know, the first week. I mean, I was, I, I mean, with that whole situation, I was at a level where I was taking like 
citrusol, Miralax, and Prunelax. And then I started doing magnesium, like very high doses. I was probably taking, let's see, 400 milligrams of magnesium. That was the dosage, but I was taking probably up to six tablets of that, 400 milligram. So up to six. Yeah. Um, so during that week, it was pretty um, hardcore, like in terms of adjustment, but I'm not taking any of that stuff anymore. I'm taking only like if one dose of 400 milligram magnesium every day, just along with my multivitamins or whatever. But um, yeah, so I think that was one thing that digest digestion, um, the adjusting of that, the IBS thing, adjust and just not having stuff in there. But after that, it's like, okay, well, goes away, you know? Yeah. Did you, um, I mean, just in general terms, obviously you were dealing with these kind of vasculitis, PCOS, IBS. Um, I don't know if you had any, you know, cognitive benefits or problems prior to, you know, some people will say they feel like they think clear, sleep better. Um, you know, w any other weird thing? I mean, some people say, well, their yeah. hair, their hair is, their hair uh, gets yeah. thicker, their skin gets better. Any, any other things you noticed? I think one, one odd thing was also like my consistent vitamin D deficiency. Um, I remember my doctor, the same doctor who had no problem with me doing this diet. Um, when he did my levels, he checked um, and he said, he's like, oh, yeah, you don't need to take vitamin D anymore. Um, you can stop because it's like good, you know, and I told him, I was like, I'm not taking vitamin D. Um, so I was actually really surprised about that because my entire life actually, because I was born with pretty severe vitamin D deficiency. But so I always had struggled with that. But it went, it, I wasn't taking any. So it got, for some reason, I don't know how, I don't ask, but it got to a regular level um, by itself without me taking vitamin D. So that was surprising for me. Um, the other thing that obviously was something that I had noticed before my gums would bleed when I would floss. Um, I don't have any bleeding gum. And when I go to dentists, anything that they do, no matter what they do, it just doesn't bleed. Um, so I have heard my dentist also tell me, oh, you have really good gums, like healthy gums and something like that. Um, before it would just be a hot mess. I think the other thing is like, obviously I talked, told you about the asthma exercise induced, uh, induced asthma. Then I would just cough for days after if I attempted to do, let's say cardio, or even if, I'm, especially when it's cold outside, if I was like doing anything cardio, I would get like cough, pretty severe cough consistent throughout the day. And for a few days, it would just last. And then I just did not want to exercise because of that. And then the other thing was the joint inflammation. I, if I, since I was, was a kid too, if I exercised uh, or if I ran a little too much or if something, I would get my ankle swelling or knee swelling or my joints or I don't want to say joints would pop out of place, but it would be joints inflammation one time pop. Something happened where I had to go get it adjusted and but it was consistently things were just not there were always some misalignment issues it seemed that prevented me from exercising or like just endurance in general, exercise, recovery. But now um, I don't have any of those problems. And so I can exercise. I don't cough uh, after exercising. It doesn't matter if it's cardio or weights or whatever. And then I can actually consistently exercise and I don't get any of the issues with joint pain or anything like that. I knee pain. Um, I had like my left knee was always like in pain, but that went away. I think that was one thing that I didn't realize that might be connected uh, of chronic inflammation. I never realized I had inflammation just to let you know, but it seemed pretty obvious that there was after this because I always made an excuse not to exercise because I was afraid that, oh, this might happen or this might happen. I'm tired of like feeling like this, but in reality, like as the, this uh, diet, what it taught me, it's like, no, actually you can do those things pretty consistently it was just the inflammation I had to get rid of to be able to do it. So, yeah, yeah I want to, you know, just back to the gum thing, you know, because a lot of people are saying, mm -hmm. well, you know, carnivore diet, you're going to get scurvy. And one of the symptoms of, of scurvy is gum, you know, gum, you know, gum, gum bleeding and things like that. But it's kind of like you have the opposite where your gums actually get healthier. And I've seen that over and over again. Yeah. Where people say they go on diets where, you know, particularly where they're moving sugar and, and, and a lot of refined carbohydrates. 
their teeth health, you know, their dental health just gets so much better. And I noticed, even with myself, I noticed the same thing. I used to have very sensitive gums and the dentist would say, you look like your gums are receding a little bit. And then yeah. I, I changed that and everything went away. It's all better now. Never have issues with sensitive gum, never gums, never bleed. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, it is, it's kind of a window to your overall health, your mouth, your dental health is. And to think about if you're on a diet where your, your dental health is poor, you can be better, you can be pretty clear that that's a wrong diet for human beings. If your teeth start falling out, it's not the right diet. It's not going to, yeah. it's not going to do well. I mean, any animal that loses its teeth will die very soon after it. And, you know, we have dentistry where we can kind of preserve our, you know, our ability to chew, but you know, it's, it's not the right diet for us. And, you know, it's, it's the other thing you mentioned is, you know, you didn't even know you had inflammation. A lot of people are in this situation where they don't really know they feel bad until they feel good. And it's kind of one of those things. So are you now able to, you said you're able to exercise now. I mean, are you able to do that now? Are you doing that more? Oh yeah. Yeah. I do it pretty regularly. Um, I, I do at least like four times a week. Um, I've been doing a lot of weights, um, weight training. Cause I obviously, I think for so long, I didn't uh, exercise uh, or do anything out of fear that, what I noticed is just like, okay, well, it's not helping my muscles. I need to strengthen my muscles, but if I can't exercise, you're not. So it's like a infinite, like a little cycle that happens. But what I'm able to do for sure, it's within the past two years, I increased um, my stamina or also the weights that I can actually lift has increased consistently. And I do, I also have a Peloton bike. I do that um, a lot too. Um, I just do Peloton a few times, like with uh, increased kind of um, high intensity workouts. But my um, weight training is like at least three times. I'll do it at home because I have all the gadgets or whatever, like the weights and everything. I, I'll, I'll be able to, I couldn't even handle, let's say, a deadlift before. But at this point, um, like I'm not a champ, you know, but <laughs> I can consistently keep doing these things. and. I won't harm myself or hurt myself and nothing gets in the way of me consistently exercising because there are no flare ups of any, any kind. Like, so, and I, my, I recover pretty fast too. So I don't feel as tired for a couple of days before if I exercised, then for a few days I would have to recover. Cause I just, uh, otherwise I snap like a muscle, um, my quad muscle one time, but at this point, because I think recovery is so much easier. I could do it regularly. And it just, I, I don't know. It's amazing. It's pretty good. It's just, you can, it's like a magic, magic cure for some reason. I don't know, but just, it works. You know, I think what? it's it's amazing how it's like a chain reaction and how many things are connected uh, that you don't realize. What about, you know, a lot of people, you know, will say, well, this is good and well and great. I'm glad for you got better and healthier, but you know, I, I couldn't afford this diet. I mean, what are your thoughts on relative cost now versus maybe what you might've been eating in the past? And I, you and both your husband are, are more or less on this. It sounds like, um, is it dramatically increasing your food costs or is it, is it, is it, is the overall cost less due to maybe, you know, supplements, medications, doctor visits, or just food in general? Actually, that's a very good point. Okay. So, um, I didn't think about that in those terms that, you know, how much you were paying to go see doctors and stuff. Uh, but that's a, that's a very good point. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been to a doctor this year at all. Uh, I mean, maybe next year I'll go for annual physical, but I haven't had the need to go. Uh, but I think um, I have noticed that if you're buying other things like veggies and other like knickknacks, like nuts or things like that, it, I know the price of meat, especially right now. I mean, I have noticed everyone has, I'm sure the prices of meat are going up beef particularly, but I think we, we stick to a lot of also um, cheaper cuts sometimes though you can get really creative with them and like really delicious recipes, like roasts and things like that. Um, and even with pork alternating, I think overall, if you're not buying what I have noticed, if you're not buying all the other things that you would buy before and you're buying meat, it kind of off, it, it's eventually bad. It, there's a balance to it because number one, I'm not eating as much as I used to in terms of consistent snacking. 
Uh, so I have no need to pile up on things that I will snack on. I'm only eating really mainly eggs, um, like bacon or sausage and then meats for, for dinner. And then the other thing is also we noticed like before when you buy veggies, fruits or other things like that, it would go bad really fast and you just wasted your money on getting these things that you got to get to and eat. The good thing about this stuff is that, um, well, you could just buy and put meat in the free freezer and you can pull it out, defrost, and then, you know, as you need for the next day or whatever. But also these foods don't go bad as quickly. So you can eat them and then you're not really wasting food. That's one thing I did notice that we weren't, we weren't tossing food out. We weren't really trashing food at that point because we were actually eating everything. We would get to it. If you don't get to it in a week, it's not going to go bad, like eggs or cheese or things like that. So in terms of cost, yeah, I know that the beef is more expensive now. Like we're not eating like ribeye every day, but there are other different meats to eat are just as good and fatty. So I think before, obviously, let's say we go to Costco and get one pack of ribeye. We had like six pieces in it, five, like at least. And now it's like down to three or something. <laughs> we also get from other online places when we order and then they just deliver it in like nicely packed. Um, oh yeah. I also do a lot of bone broths. You know, I think it does, uh, it does offset just because you're not going out there and buying all the other things. I know from the get go, you see the price, you're like, oh my God, this is so expensive. I can't do it. You don't have to eat ribeye every day. You can eat like delicious variations of ground beef made into different keftas or tacos or other things. You can experiment with other meats. There's like a lot of fun you can have. I know it's intimidating seeing some prices of the meat, but you know, it really, it, it's not hard when you start like buying all the other types of meat and mixing it up, you know, or eggs, you know, get eggs. So. Yeah. You, I mean, you didn't mention if you're in New York city or in New York city. I mean, most people only think about New York is think about New York city because it's so many people there, but, uh, and, and whether you're there or not, I mean, any thoughts on, you know, you've got a mayor, mayor, mayor Eric Adams, who is, I guess he's sort of the vegan. I guess he eats fish still. He's got a, he calls it a plant-based centered life or something along those lines. And he's, you know, he's in, there's Mo meatless Monday, which I think the Blasio brought in. And then there's now there's vegan Friday and they're trying to sort of push this plant-based narrative down people's throats in some way. Are you impacted by that at all? Do you see that? Is that realistically, is that just a headline or is there, is there actually a, a real effort to see this going on? And are you concerned about it, that it might impact you negatively as it may, you know, maybe not, not, you know, at some point you could see where they attempt to make meat so cost prohibitive or taxed mm. or difficult that, that a lot of people that are getting health benefits from this won't be able to do it anymore. Are you concerned about that? Or do you see any of that happening? Well, I think it depends where you live. I'm definitely not in the city. If you're away from the cities, I think it's a little bit different to be honest, but, uh, I'm I'm in a little bit more rural. There are a lot of farms around me. Like sometimes I'll go to a farm to pick up like meats and bones, like or whatever. But it is hard to kind of be impacted by things like that if you're in the city. Um, I mean, city is also very expensive anyway. The cost of living is more expensive. So I guess you know if it's already expensive, people might decide not to get meat because they need to pay rent. I'm not sure, but <laughs> I could see that happening. But as for me. I have decided not to live in the city anymore because uh, luckily I, I work from home. So it's kind of, it works out and it depends where you are. I could see that, um, how that can also impact people's decision. Yeah. You know, some people will experiment by putting other foods back in the diet. You know, once they, once they feel better, they like, maybe they'll add some, some, some vegetables, some rice some fruits and potatoes, things like that. Have you, have you played with any of that stuff? Have you tried to do any of that? And if so, what was your experience? So, yeah, as I said, my, my mom was visiting um, from California. So I did. Yeah. I mean, you know, whatever. I don't regret it. You can go back. Um, but I did <laughs> eat some of her food. Um, I think one thing I did observe is this. While I did eat for a week, a non-carnivore diet, and the number one thing that really just damaged my insides was nuts. Again, mm -hmm. just to say, like, clear. I had some walnuts and cashews that really messed me up pretty bad. And even if I just didn't eat it for the next day, that lasted for a few days. But then even when I didn't have nuts, I had some sweet potatoes uh, at one point and I did have 
like other things that are made with flour. There's no equivalent of that in, in, in um, English, but things that had flour and dough. Yeah, I, I just could feel that it, it wasn't the same in terms of I upped my magnesium dose so, so, so try, uh, to just help me at that point because, um, yeah, I, I, I voluntarily put myself in that situation, but it was also a uh, part of me was just like excited. My mom was here and she was making food and delicious food, you know, she would make, but I did notice that incorporating some of those foods. Now, I don't know, obviously the nuts definitely are just like a big no for me at this point and prove themselves to be, but the other stuff also didn't help, even if it wasn't nuts, like the potato yam or doughy things. Um, also something just wasn't sitting well. I was just like ridiculously bloated uh, and so uncomfortable to a point I couldn't sleep at nights because of the pain, very bad pain. Uh, and then I just couldn't focus throughout the day. It's just like this constant rock. <laughs> I don't know. Like it was the worst feeling ever, like expanded stomach, just ridiculous pains and then I often would gain like uh, shooting pains around where my stomach is so yeah I just obviously when she left I stopped doing it that's why I'm doing the, the fasting so I could just reset and go back you know when you're you know was your mom aware of the fact that you had changed the diet and you're eating basically an all meat diet at some point did you discuss yes. that with her and what, what was her thought you're crazy what are you uh, doing what are you doing my yes. crazy daughter <laughs> Yeah, actually, that's one thing. It's just like, oh, my God, impossible to deal with. Uh, she's very much convinced that you can't keep eating just meat or just like those animal products. I don't know why. Uh, she kind of feels that um, you need to have antioxidants from the veggies and fruits, you know, things like that. She definitely is a big proponent of like the fruits have this antioxidant or this green leaf has this property or this has this thing, you know, like, and you can, if you don't eat them, you're going to have deficiencies. But the funny thing is, is when I, I, I told her multiple times too, it's like, if when I did my blood tests and my levels were just normal and actually better, better than before, when I compared it myself to the levels of liver and function and other things, um, vitamin D or just vitamins in general, they were better. So I don't know. I think it's just like once people just, they don't want to accept that they may not know everything. They just fixate it on that. So it doesn't matter if I show her my levels or if I tell her, look, I'll feel fantastic. Like, you know, I can do all these things without, uh, you know, all this supplements or this, this. And she's still skeptical. Yeah, she's very skeptical about it in a way that she still feels like, well, no, that can't be like. How is that possible? You're just going to eat meat. You'll be vitamin deficient, you know. So I haven't um, been successful in convincing her so far. So I, I just, uh, how, how, yeah, is, it's, it's, how is, is she generally pretty healthy though? Is she generally doing well? She's doing well generally. I think, you know, she's not a person that goes um, berserk overeating like unhealthy foods. I think her diet is, like you said, she's generally healthy in terms of, proportional enough like uh, her it's like veggie to carb to this it's pretty balanced like i used like i said i used to do this before the diet um the carnivore diet but it could be that just she doesn't have a uh, sensitivity to i don't know like i think i'm not sure just like just to tell you but she hasn't complained specifically of anything health related so she probably uses herself as like like i'm fine you know you could be fine with this diet so that's that's the thing that I've noticed with my mom. Do definitely. Say, I'm, yeah. I'm just curious is, you know, I mean, your husband obviously did this first. Do, do you think you could have done this diet without him being on board or supporting you or, or, or would you have done it on your own without that? I think in the beginning, uh, it, it always helps to have like a buddy system where you do it together. It's easier to make foods. You don't have to make extra foods or different types of foods. But right now, actually, um, uh, he's not doing strictly carnivore or uh, he is doing like he's incorporating. You have talked to him, actually. You, you might remember him, but he, he's undergoing um, uh, chemo right now. So he's changed it slightly to maintain weight. He added more carb and fat uh, to his diet so he can gain a little bit more weight. Because um, I think he was in some like at some point very deep ketosis because of his specific um, situation. Uh, where he needs to be modified right now to we try and get make help him gain weight 
but I, even right now, um, I prepare his foods for him, um, uh, with no problem. You know, I do all the stuff and I still continue like doing my own thing. So I think it doesn't matter if you're making food, you're making food. It doesn't matter if you're making two pans or like one, I think you're at it. You can just, and it's so easy. It's not even hard to make carnivore foods. It's simple. Like often one ingredient, <laughs> like you don't need much to, you just put, let's say ribs in the grill. Mm -hmm. And then you get it from the grill or you like broil eggs or, you, you know, it's just very simple. It doesn't require a lot of different ingredients. So it's not time consuming to cook. So even if I have to do stuff, different stuff for him right now, my portion of food making is so easy that it doesn't take that much time at all, actually. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. I, I, and I, and I know a lot of people just feel they, they need support of friends, family, you know, or an online community yeah. like we have here to, to, to be able to, you know, to stick to it or to, to have motivation or to, uh, you know, find accountability, things like that information, which is, I think is important. Um, are you, I mean, and, and also, and tell your husband, I hope he does better and, and, and whatever's going on that, 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 that he improves. Um, are you a person that does social media type stuff? Do you participate in that very much or not really? Not really. Um, I think I'm so neat dip or like just right here with a uh, specific work that I'm doing. Um, I'm not as active in social media um, anymore, um, but I am I'm in on social media just because I like to follow. Like you said, community, I think is important. And um, I follow you and other accounts. And I think you always learn from other people. Um, well, num first of all, I think just by even hearing how other people would um, have dealt or the experiences, their experiences with carnivore and other things, or uh, understanding if you're not following the people and um, understanding what, how it's going to be done in terms of process. I brought the example of, I didn't know about electrolytes or salt, uh, you know, specifically. And um, the more you have access to follow those accounts, even if it's YouTube or Instagram, then you can fine tune it in a way and finally find it, um, something um, that actually works. But it is, yeah, I guess if, if you are doing it alone, it's it, it would be hard without the community of people who are who have been doing it for years and can actually help with advice, even if they're just you know sharing something. Oh, you know, I I did this and it helped me. I don't feel like you up, up your fat, you know, if you, his mom also tried carnivore while she was staying with us, she wasn't taking in a lot of fat. And when the moment we had told her, no, no, you can't just eat like lean meats, like you need to eat more fat. So otherwise you're going to feel tired. She was like, Oh really? Like, and then she felt better. Um, so it's like those little things that otherwise I wouldn't know if I wasn't following, let's say you or like um, other folks that are doing carnivore. So it's like tips and tricks or, you know, like, how easy it is to make carnivore food. I go on your website, the re recipes, right? Like mm -hmm. for example, and then you can explore recipes and then sooner or later you can modify and learn how to come up with your own recipes. So um, I do that a lot too. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think a carnivore diet is definitely not nothing but skinny, lean chicken breast. You're not going to succeed there. No, it no. doesn't have to be gorging on butter all day long either. There's kind of a balance in the middle. I think that most people find well. Well, thank you very much. We're running out of time. I want to just, you. you know, like I said, I've got to go do some consultations now, but thank you for sharing your story and good luck and, 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 uh, continue luck to your husband and, uh, appreciate you, you know, doing this. This will definitely inspire some people and thank you. So anyway, the rest of you guys, you. we do have another one. at two, 2 PM today, Pacific time. If you're interested, we have another, another success story. I think it's somebody in lives in a weird time zone. So we got to accommodate their schedule for that. So thank you guys. If not, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Everybody have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now. Thanks. Thank you so Thanks, much, Sean. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye now. Okay. Bye. Hey folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. You can sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful, and we'd love to see your success.